Earlier this week, SpaceX's powerful deluge system underwent its first test. The impressive moment took place at 2.22 p.m. Eastern on July 17th at SpaceX's Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. Video from Starship Gazer shows thousands of gallons of water shooting up from the orbital launch mount with tremendous force. The sound of the water blasting upwards was surprisingly intense. More powerful tests are likely as SpaceX works towards the next static fire test of Starship. How much water exactly will SpaceX use for a Starship launch? And how will this compare to the other platform? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. First of all, why is the water deluge system even a thing? The billowing clouds of water vapor you see when any other spacecraft take flight come from two sources. Obviously, the first is its launch system. The gigantic rocket that spacecraft is attached to is commonly powered by a combination of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Some of the vapor that you see during a launch is caused by the supercooled liquid fuel turning into gas when the overpressure is bled off just before launch, along with water vapor forming as it condenses around the O2 and H2. The second primary source of water vapor comes from the launch pad sound and fire suppression systems. Engineers foresaw that the sheer amount of acoustic energy generated by a launch would be enough to damage the extremely sensitive and expensive onboard electronic equipment. They arrived at a relatively cost-efficient solution, water. Right before a launch, massive amounts of water are ejected from a nearby tank to minimize this damage and prevent fires from starting on the launch pad. Indeed, Indeed, water will be especially important with the launch of Starship, the most powerful rocket in the world. The first orbital launch attempt of the full Starship and booster stack in April answered this. Once all engines are ignited, that is an unprecedented amount of force and heat. Raptor 2 spits out about 685 kilograms per second. That's almost 700 kilograms. Imagine that I was about 100 kilograms, which is around 220 pounds. Now imagine seven of me. That's over 1,500 pounds of force hitting you each second. Every second. Just imagine, seven of me just flying into your face. Now that's a lot of force. Luckily, I've been hitting those Stairmasters pretty hard, but that doesn't make any difference, I guess. In any case, the exhaust will leave the nozzle at a speed of around 3.3 kilometers per second. It's also scorching hot, with temperatures hovering over 1400 degrees Celsius. With a nozzle diameter of around 1.3 meters, a single Raptor engine releases about 4,400 cubic meters of burning hot gas every second. Future boosters will be crammed with 33 Raptor 3 engines. Isn't that a significant amount of energy? We know that one ton of methane contains around 56 gigajoules of chemical energy. Even starting with the initial 29 Raptor 1 engines planned for booster 4, a total mass of 16 tons per second is predicted, of which 3.6 tons is methane. That's nearly 200 gigawatts of energy released. In a modern nuclear power plant, a single block produces roughly 1.3 gigawatts of electricity and requires about 4 gigawatts of heat to do so. So when a super heavy is turned on, it generates enough heat to run 50 nuclear reactors at the same time. They'll burn through 5 tons of methane every second until they're outfitted with 33 Raptor 2s, totaling 280 gigawatts. Can you imagine how powerful that is? That's enough energy to melt steel and demolish concrete in a matter of seconds. This reason alone is why the water deluge system is so important, and water is an excellent heat heat absorber. But what amount of water does Starship require for each launch? Eventually, the system could spray as much as 350,000 gallons of water during Starship ignition and liftoff. According to the Federal Aviation Administration's Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, from June of 2022. In comparison, Launch Pad Zero at the Mid-Atlantic Spaceport at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia is equipped with a 950,000 liter water tower, 370 feet of above the ground. It's among the tallest in the world. Engine exhaust exits through a ring of water jets in the launch platform, directly beneath engine nozzles. The system is capable of delivering 15 cubic meters per second. Additional storage tanks totaling 380,000 liters may be added for static fire tests. But what about NASA's space launch system, you might be thinking? Or maybe you weren't, but now you are, right? Following the retirement of the space shuttle program, Pad B at Launch Complex 39 was upgraded for launches of 
of the SLS. The control system was upgraded including replacement of nearly 400 kilometers of copper cables with 92 kilometers of fiber optic cable. Capacity was upgraded to 1.5 million liters with a peak flow rate of 4,200,000 liters per minute. The upgraded system was tested in December of 2018 with 1,700,000 liters. And that's enough water to supply a town of a thousand for almost six whole days. During the test and the launch of Artemis missions, 450,000 gallons of water will be released onto the mobile launcher and flame deflector. There's this difference because, unlike NASA's water deluge system to suppress the excessive noise produced during launches of the SLS rocket, SpaceX's deluge system uses water to absorb energy from the rocket as it lifts off, with most of the water expected to be vaporized by the heat of the rocket engines, the FAA said. Additionally, the Starbase launch pad is also equipped with the metal diverter. In fact, to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius, it takes a little over four kilojoules, and it also takes about 2.3 megajoules per kilogram to evaporate water. To keep the temperature under control and prevent damage to the orbital launch pad, we'd need about 80 tons of water every second on average. However, keep in mind that the exhaust gas dispersing into the surrounding air carries away a lot of the heat, and roughly half of the energy is stored in the motion of the gas. So, the sound suppression system is another important responsibility for that system. If the sound is higher than 180 decibels, the unsuppressed noise of launches becomes absurdly loud to the point of being deadly and destructive to nearby objects. As a frame of reference, a quiet home emits about 40 decibels of noise. Amplified rock and roll music is about 120 decibels at 100 feet, and a jet plane gives off 130 decibels at 100 feet. When a pad is properly saturated, the noise level drops to roughly 140 decibels. That's still quite loud though, even louder than a metal band concert. Why don't we just listen to rubber bands? Anyways, to be able to hold a huge amount of water for each launch, SpaceX has water tanks 9 meters wide and around 30 meters tall. Hopefully, it'll contain enough water to sustain the upcoming dense launches. But if you're still worried that SpaceX will release water and pollute the environment, SpaceX submitted the application for a State of Florida Industrial Wastewater Facility permit back in December 15th of 2021. According to the draft proposal, the wastewater treatment facility will support what the documents dub Hangar X, which is located at the intersection of Roberts Road and State Road 3 on the KSC property on Merritt Island. It says here it's going to consist of a 68,563 square foot hangar, a 109,139 square foot office building, and two two wet detention ponds on the west side of the area. There will also be three cooling towers to provide air conditioning, two of which would be primarily used with the third as a backup. The draft permit states that municipal water will be cycled over the heat exchanger coils multiple times prior to discharge into the on-site stormwater ponds. During this process, there will not be any exchanges between the municipal makeup water and the process water. SpaceX will use a ProMOS filtration system, which uses is sphagnum moss to improve water quality during cycling. The document notes that the ProMOS filter will absorb positively charged ions like iron, manganese, calcium, and zinc and stabilize the pH of the water. The draft permit also includes a breakdown of surface water discharges that need to be monitored and the limits that SpaceX is not allowed to exceed. It also outlines the schedule for monitoring the water and how that data needs to be submitted to the FDEP. Well folks, that wraps up our show for today. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.